Another example is Deuteronomy 34, 9. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Mostly we're getting into the uh, New Testament for the laying on of hands. What does this mean for us? Uh, and how should we handle this? There's a good example here in Acts 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul, that's Paul, for the work which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So helping to describe the situation here in Acts chapter 13, from Acts of the Apostles, before being sent forth as missionaries to the heathen world, these apostles, referring to Barnabas and Saul, were solemnly dedicated to God by fasting and prayer and the laying on of hands. Thus they were authorized by the church not only to teach, but to perform the rite of baptism and to organize churches being invested with full ecclesiastical authority. Their ordination was a public recognition of their divine appointment to bear to the Gentiles the glad tidings of the gospel. Both Paul and Barnabas had already received their commission from God himself, and the ceremony of the laying on of hands added no new grace or virtual qualification. It was an acknowledged form of designation to an appointed office and a recognition of one's authority in that office. By it, the seal of the church was set upon the work of God. So they were just ordaining these people to go out and perform a work. Uh, 1 Timothy 5.22 says, Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily. What does that mean? Fourth testimony. The apostle says, Lay hands suddenly on no man. In the days of the apostles, the ministers of God did not dare to rely upon their own judgment in selecting or accepting men to take the solemn and sacred position of mouthpiece for God. They selected the men whom their judgment would accept, and then they placed them before the Lord to see if he would accept them to go forth as his representatives. No less than this should be done now. In many places we meet men who have been hurried into responsible positions as elders of the church when they are not qualified for such a position. They have not proper government over themselves. Their influence is not good. The church is in trouble continually in consequence of the defective character of their leader. Hands have been laid too suddenly upon these men. That's how she describes uh, what's, what's going on here. Another aspect of laying on hands was for healing. Mark 16, 15, And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Another example in Luke 4, 40. Again, we're looking at the master, uh, what he did. When the sun was setting... All those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. So again, healing on of hands is also used for healing. Acts 28, 8. And it happened that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Paul went into him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and healed him. And now that's usually in the combination of uh, praying for them and laying the hands on uh, Acts 9.17, And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. This verse uh, shows us two applications, healing and giving the Holy Spirit, which is our next topic. Ellen White writes about this. This is a uh, Councils on Health. The Savior devoted more time and labor to healing the afflicted of their maladies than to preaching. His last injunction to his apostles, his representatives on earth, was to lay hands on the sick that they might recover. When the Master shall come, he will commend those who have visited the sick 
and relieve the necessities of the afflicted. Let's take a look at the, uh, for the medical missionary, this is a great and awesome thing going on uh, for the Lord right now. Anyone who's a medical missionary, domestically or overseas, this is awesome. Uh, isn't that the right hand or the right arm of the gospel? It's the medical work. Uh, we know Ellen White says that uh, health is the entering wedge. This is enormously important if you're involved. God bless you. The work of the true medical missionary is largely a spiritual work. It includes prayer and the laying on of hands. He therefore should be as sacredly set apart for his work as is the minister of the gospel. Those who are selected to act the part of missionary physicians are to be set apart as such. This will strengthen them against the temptations to withdraw from the sanitarium work to engage in private practice. No selfish motives should be allowed to draw the worker from his post of duty. The medical work done in connection with the giving of the third angel's message is to accomplish wonderful results. It is to be a sanctifying, unifying work, corresponding to the work which the great head of the church sent forth the first disciples to do. Laying on of hands also uh, imparts can impart the Holy Spirit, Acts 8.17. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, Acts 19.6. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Another uh, aspect of laying on of hands is for imparting a gift. 1 Timothy 4.14 do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. In 2 Timothy 1.6, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. Laying on of hands, the Bible shows us, uh, is for blessing, for ordination, for healing, for the Holy Spirit, and for gifts. This is the doctrine of the laying on of hands. So that's what they did to the Levites, and the Levites consecrated themselves. Uh, Numbers 8.21, it says the Levites purified themselves and washed their clothes. Then Aaron presented them like a wave offering before the Lord, and Aaron made atonement for them to cleanse them. The Levites, that's God's people who kept the law at Mount Sinai. They weren't part of the apostasy. They were the ones who did not, uh, they were the ones who accepted the Ten Commandments, accepted God's covenant, and did not find different reasons or excuses or circumstances or situations to fall away from that. They purified themselves. They washed their clothes. So this is God's people who, um, symbolically God's people who kept the law. And Aaron, that's a type of Christ, presented them like a wave offering before the Lord. And Aaron made atonement for them to cleanse them. Revelation 7.14 Similarly, these are the ones who come out of great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the things that you've shown us so far in the book of Numbers. Continue to bless our studies and our week and, um, and our Sabbath day. Help us see you again next Sabbath. Help us spend time on our knees and in your word. Thank you for your help. In Jesus' name, amen.